I'm Peter Block in Chicago at the AHA annual meeting for On the Scene. And with me to my left is Peter McCartney from Scotland. And Peter has been interested in intracoronary lytics and the whole issue of microcirculatory collapse or microcirculatory obstruction, call it what you will. That's right, yeah. The question that, that Peter asked in his trial uh, called tea time, if I'm right, That's correct, yeah. uh, is whether or not doing an intracoronary alteplase injection will make a difference to microcircular obstruction. So, Peter, without further ado, tell me quickly about your trial, yep. and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, microcirculatory obstruction in general, because it's an important issue. I think so, yeah. So, we recruited patients who had presented within six hours of symptom onset uh, with an occluded artery or high thrombus burden on coronary angiography. We randomized in the catheterization lab to placebo, 10 milligrams or 20 milligrams of autoplays after reperfusion, but before we put in the stent. And that was then given as a slow manual infusion. Okay, so having said that, they, half of them get a lytic, half of them don't. What'd you measure? I mean, how did you measure microcirculatory obstruction? It's a good question. So, um, the primary endpoint for the trial was microvascular obstruction, and that is demonstrated on cardiac MRI. It's performed two to seven days after the um, reperfusion itself. Okay, so that's a little different than infarct size, isn't it? So we get information on infarct size as well, uh, but in this trial we were um, aiming to target microvascular obstruction. Okay, so having said all of those preliminary things, uh, the trial was a little bit of a disappointment because? So our primary endpoint, there was, there was no difference in the primary endpoint of microvascular obstruction between the treatment groups and uh, placebo. Yeah, well, you know, uh, let me ask you something, Peter, because you know we've all seen that as interventional cardiologists taking a patient to the cath lab at 2 a.m., right? A lot of thrombus, you try to get rid of it, and all of a sudden you see this terrible slow flow phenomenon of microcirculatory obstruction, and you think, well, why not a lytic? And now it's shown that it doesn't make any difference. So what's going on here, Peter? Tell me what you think one is going on in terms of the complexity of this, and then yeah. secondary, is there anything on the horizon that's going to make this better, or how do we deal with this? Okay, so um, we know that um, conditions like high thrombus burden put patients at risk of microvascular obstruction, um, and that's why we selected these patients for this trial. Um, we also know that there are a number of factors that are involved in microvascular obstruction, so although thrombus may be very important, in terms of blocking the microvessels at the time of reperfusion, you know, extrinsic edema of the cardiac myocytes, um, as well as inflammatory responses, may also ha will also have an impact. And so, um, breaking that cycle of obstruction is difficult, despite thrombus, I think, being pretty key to that initially. Um, there hasn't been much good news in terms of microvascular obstruction in clinical trials. Um, we'd often use things like intracoronary adenosine or nitrates as part of uh, no reflow in the cath lab. A recent trial in the UK showed that that has no impact and actually adenosine made things worse in terms of um, heart failure hospitalisation. Um, there are a few things on the horizon. There was a, a study conducted in Madrid. Um, a post hoc analysis of that showed that intravenous metoprolol given prior to um, reperfusion did improve microvascular obstruction. It was a small trial, it wasn't the primary endpoint, it was a post hoc analysis, um, but I believe that they plan to look at that in a, in a further randomized trial. Well, uh, you know, as an interventional cardiologist, I will tell you that I've seen more of this than I'd like, as have you, I'm sure. It's never a good sign in our patients when we see it, but, and we can see it angiographically by this slow flow of whatever. Uh, it looks awful and you say, oh my God, and it turns out that it's not a great prognostic sign. A lot to learn still here, Peter. I appreciate I you so, coming yeah. by. Sorry that your trial was negative, but an important step forward in understanding what we can and can't do. Thank you. Thank you.